Hi, greetings to Prof and fellow students. I'm Vignesh from G1, and today I'll be summarizing chapter 14 from the book Capital in the 21st Century Rethinking the Progressive Income Tax, which covers the basics of tax and the issues of progressivity it faces for extremely well off individuals. So, before we get any deeper, I have to establish some basic definitions first. Taxes have been defined by the author as being the combined monetary pool formed by the citizens of a nation that allow for action towards a common destiny. This can include stuff such as education, health, sustainable development, reduced income inequality, and so on and so forth. There are also different types of taxes, ranging from income tax, capital tax, consumption tax, social spending tax, which can help cover stuff such as unemployment, capital income tax, which can be capital or income, depending on the region that we're talking about. And then there's also the fact that different countries have different proportions and different tax rates for each type. So, to keep things simple, the author decided to categorize them primarily as being income or wealth taxes, which are taxes on your generation of income and on your accumulated assets. Tax rates themselves can be categorized as being progressive, proportional, or regressive. Progressive tax rates charge a higher percentage of income as income level increases. Proportional tax rates charge the same percentage of income regardless of income level. And regressive tax rates charge a higher percentage of income as income level decreases. And our author argues that progressivity of tax rates, especially for well-off individuals beyond the top 1% and around the 0.5 to 0.1% range, has declined over time and this should not be the case. What does it mean decline? Was it ever high? Well, to quickly run through history, progressive tax rates originated around the time period of World War I, when countries were in dire need of money and decided to heavily tax its citizens for the additional revenue. And after a while, they came to the natural conclusion that it would be better to tax its rich at a higher tax rate in order to decrease the burden of tax incidence on its poor. And this remains status quo for most of its countries as it helped to a successful economic growth up until around the 1980s when other countries also started implementing similar high progressive tax rates and started experiencing catch-up growth. In response to this, America and Britain primarily decided to slash their tax rates from the high marginal, previous high marginal tax rates from around the 80-90% to 90 range all the way down to the 20-30% to 30 range. Other countries feared this sudden tax decrease and also decreases also decrease their own tax in fear of tax competition. After a while, tax exemptions were also introduced on stuff such as capital income tax, which are mostly earned, about, earned by high income individuals. All of this combined has led to a high decrease in progressivity of income for extremely well off individuals. The author argued that we should reduce these tax exemptions and increase high marginal tax rates for extremely wealthy to reduce income inequality. Assuming proper tax policies and proper redistribution policies, the additional revenue earned from the capital and wealth held at the very top can be used to help the less fortunate. Some argue that this will lead to a decrease in tax revenue in the long run, to which the author argued, that's not the point. The increase in tax rate at the highest of percentiles is not to increase revenue, but rather to prevent the perpetuation as stagnation of such high level of wealth in the first place. Others also argued that increasing taxes for the extremely wealthy would cause the loss of reliability. Talented entrepreneurs may not be able to accumulate the capital needed for such high level of innovation. These entrepreneurs may also lead to other places with lower taxes in response to tax spikes, which will make the former countries and citizens worse off. This is the tax competition that I mentioned earlier that other countries feared, as it might cause an extreme brain drain scenario. To which the author argued, it's arguable. If, high marginal if tax rates remain high even after the 1980s, we will never know for sure if companies such as Apple and Microsoft will be able to produce the high-end innovations that they are producing today. But that does not mean that productivity as a whole has increased. In fact, even though executive pay in Britain and America has skyrocketed after the 1980s due to the marginal tax rate cuts, 
productivity growth themselves has actually decreased. With productivity growth rate in the 1990 to 2000 period in the US being only half of that of what it was in the 1950 to 1970s period. This suggests that the tax cuts are helping the rich to get richer rather than actually causing a boost in productivity. So long story short, the author is in support of increasing tax rates and reducing exemptions as he believes that these the advantages are much more superior to its drawbacks. For a more comprehensive explanation, please do give the book a try. Thank you.